I'm standing in a corner of my apartment, and in front of me is a table with quart jars filled with tallow tree seeds and seed husks that had fallen on our patio floor. The mature seeds are dark. White seeds, which are immature, also drop from the tree, but in much smaller numbers. These samples came from our neighbor's tree, whose branches hung above our side of the dividing fence. The seeds and their woody husks had been collected over a roughly two-year period, and although here they are labeled nuts and shells, horticulturists generally refer to them as seeds and husks, respectively. So those are the terms I have now adopted. In the Part 1 demonstration, I stated that it was not possible to distinguish how much of the blaze could be attributed to the starter fluid, which is labeled petroleum distillates, and how much represents combustion of the seeds. Here I place about 30 cc's of Kingsford brand charcoal lighter in an aluminum pan and attempt to ignite it with a lighter fueled by butane. Clearly and surprisingly, the charcoal lighter fluid does not ignite. Dry tallow seeds are then added to the lighter fluid, which the seeds absorb. The seeds, especially those that have taken up most of the lighter fluid, are then readily ignited by the butane lighter. One may conclude that the starter fluid dissolved the combustible lipid component of the seeds, which then became accessible to the flame of the butane lighter. Once the blaze started, it is then likely that the petroleum distillates that make up the starter fluid became heated to its flash point and then burned, together with the tallow seed fuel. A different approach will have to be used to determine precisely what part of the overall combustion is contributed by each of the two components. Once ignited, the tallow seeds here were allowed to burn completely as seen in part one, leaving behind a black ash. Separate measurements of tallow seeds before and after combustion revealed that they left a spent residue of about 25% of the initial weight of the seeds, indicating that about 75% of the seeds are composed of combustible substances. Here are comparable samples of tallow seeds before and after combustion. The spent residue, which likely consists of mineral matter, retains the spherical shape of the seeds, but it is fragile and can readily be crushed into a black powder. In programs designed to be a sustainable source of energy, this residue would be returned to the orchards where the trees were grown to help replenish the soil. A second issue concerns the combustion of the woody husks that often accompany seeds that are harvested. These outer shells often fall away, leaving mature seeds still clinging to the branch tips. Here, for example, silhouetted against the late afternoon sky, one can see mature tallow seeds still clinging to the tips of branches, as well as newer dark clusters of still ripening seed pods. 
Any successful mechanism of harvesting will have to be able to remove the old seeds without disrupting the new developing crop. Fortunately, advantage can be taken of the very fragile nature of the branch tips to which the mature seeds still cling. Getting back to our attempt to burn the woody husks, once again we see that the starter fluid is not ignited, but after the husks are added and absorb the fluid, the mixture catches fire and burns. Once again, we followed the progress of combustion to the end, but in this case it was incomplete, perhaps because the hard shells require a hotter flame to maintain ignition. This requires further study. In summary, these preliminary demonstrations show the potential of the tallow tree as a major player as a future source of power. Considering that its energy-producing machinery is sun-driven, self-replicating, and never needs to be repaired, the tallow tree emerges as a clear choice as a replacement for coal, whose finite reserves will ultimately be depleted.